welcome to Catherine's Garden and Home, where we grow, 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 grow together. Well, I'm so good, so happy to be here with you today, and I am just here thinking about the garden and thinking about when will things start to warm up and when will the snow uh, melt away and when will I be able to really move into this gardening mode? But I think that uh, that is just the whole idea of thriving versus surviving. Because to be able to do really well, we need to plan. Planning helps to uh, set, us, us, set us up for success because we're not just doing things uh, haphazardly, but that we have order in our lives. And that's why I'm really enjoying my journal, um, A Garden to Call My Own, The Intentional Gardening Journal 2022. And I'm finding that I'm actually being more and more intentional in my everyday life and things that I'm doing. I'm realizing that um, just like the garden in life, we have to plan. We have to uh, think through, give it some thought if we're expecting to gain a lot of success in life and not to feel overwhelmed, to be able to thrive and not just survive. Well, good evening to those who've joined me. I see the people who have popped up in the chat. Oh, so that's so good. Hello, Deborah. Hello, Coley, uh, Gloria. Hi, Gloria and Gloria. Uh, Glory, Glory, Glory and Deborah. How are you both doing? So good to have you with me this evening. It's so nice uh, to see too that the weather is um, getting warmer all of a sudden but because <laughs> it was really really cold last night it was like nine degrees uh, now it's getting warmer and it's such a good thing I'm on time yes you are Deborah you're more than on time <laughs> right. yes um, I decided that I'd get started since um, we we're getting closer to time uh, but around 5 30 is when I do want to begin and um, just share with you all and then also I've noticed that it's uh, dusk is not until around 5 30 around 5 30 5 45 so that's such a wonderful thing to know that it's getting lighter and lighter outside so soon I'm going to be able to take this whole operation outside on the deck and we can have true garden rendezvous where we can come together and chat and talk but in the meantime we're in my home Catherine's home right and it's a good thing I named it Catherine's garden and home where we grow 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 together so it makes being in this space relevant <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, how are you all doing? I hope that all is well and thank you already for the thumbs up and for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Catherine and I'm here in Zone 6 in the Northeast in the Boston area and we have been coming together to just share our times together, to enjoy one another, to laugh and to talk and to just enjoy this hour, probably hour and a half of uh, just a time to share and to chat. Well, I have been thinking about the garden, of course, and what I'm going to add and what I'm going to subtract. And I've been really looking at a lot of my old videos from 2021. And I'm amazed at how thick and lush and beautiful the garden was for last year and a lot of the sections that I created last year they were new to the garden uh, they were a new experience and it really allowed me to create and to dream and then to 
to produce, to have it manifest. For example, my herbal tea garden area and also the what I call the jewel garden area or the ruby garden up in the front. That whole side, um, was I was able to revamp it and to create a new look. So that was very exciting last year. I really enjoyed my time in gardening last year. So now this year, what am I going to do? How am I going to make it even better? And that is, that is the thought. That's what I'm thinking of. And I do want, hello, Sonia, how are you? Good to have you. So that is why I'm saying, am I going to just survive or am I going to thrive? Am I going to really um, take it up a notch? And when I say take it up a notch, I don't necessarily mean that you have to spend more money or, um, you know, add new things to it. But I think really taking care of what we have and then utilizing everything that we have available. And on that note, I wanted to share with you what I saw in my, um, I got the, <laughs> the gardener. You're great. That's good. That's good. The Gardener Supply Company. This came in today, and I didn't. I don't think I ordered a Gardener Supply catalog, but it showed up, and it was the timing was perfect because um, I could share with you it with you all today, and uh, so I was looking through it to see what it had to offer, and I thought about you all. I thought about you guys. I said. We've been talking about composters, composting. And look, you could get a compost bin and they have all of these different types of ways of composting. So if you have a gardener's, uh, gardener's supply company catalog, they give you this free information on uh, the different ways of composting and tools that you can use to compost. And they even, give you step-by-step -step instructions on what to do with composting. Now, I found that to be very informative. The sponsors found you. You may receive more items from garden suppliers. Oh, well, that's nice. <laughs> I hope that's true. Send on the freebies. <laughs> I'll receive them. Um, so then you have here, it says composting step by step. Add two parts brown materials, that's uh, paper, con and stalks, twigs, dry leaves, pine needles. And then it says one part green, that, that's the grass clippings, fruit and veggies, fresh leaves, eggs and shells. And then it says mix or turn them together and then keep moist but not soggy. And so I think that is just so basic, especially for composting, if you want to compost this year, that we don't need to make it so complicated. I was watching this video um, of one of uh, the homesteaders, and uh, she was showing composting on her homestead, and she had this guy come up, and he was showing her how to make the lasagna layers and, and how to create heat and all of this stuff. In the It was so complicated. I was like, oh, no, I don't think I can do all of that. But so seeing this simple diagram of what to do and how to compost, it, it was so encouraging. I said, wow, that's really good. And you know what really it's made me um, excited was the fact that they had a galvanized compost pail. Check this out. A galvanized compost pail. So if you have a galvanized garbage can, you can trans, uh, you can um, create a compost bin with it. And then here's a plastic, or is that plastic? No, that's ceramic. But I'm sure that you can get a plastic garbage can and do the same thing. Um, put in different layers of different debris, let it sit there, keep it moist, and eventually it will, you know, over time it will degrade and become compost for your garden. I think you'd have to put holes, though, 
in the plastic so that it could breathe and maybe holes underneath. Hello, Christy. How are you? Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, good afternoon. Thank you. But I was thinking about this. I said, well, how can we become more creative? I like the way um, Robbie composts. She's on Robbie and Gary YouTube. Okay, I don't know them, but thanks for sharing them, th their uh, composting. So that is a, th that's something that we can think of when we're composting. How can we make it easier? And then, um, and then here we have um, the single wire bins. So if you have some wire, you can put uh, create like a bin there, and just put your um, compost in it so that it can aerate, and then turn it. So that seemed quite easy. And I think these are our bins or things that we can create ourselves. Hello, Team Mama Gross. How are you? Good to have you. So instead of spending a lot of money for a compost bin, I think using the ideas that they have here and creating your own, creating your own DIY is probably a really good way of, of, of creating your own design and making it unique to you and utilizing what you have. I think that is the whole idea. What do you have in your hand? What do you have available? And sometimes, hello, Miss Rachel, how you doing? <laughs> Good to have you in the chat. Um, how can we become more... Um, Gardens Army, good evening, Miss Catherine and Gardening Friends. Hello, Bev. How you doing, sweetie pie? <laughs> yes. Hello, everyone. Yes, greet everybody. You're making me so happy. You all showed up today. That's good. And I hope you have ideas because I'm going to need your help today. We're going to talk through and you're going to chat and um, help me out with ideas. So, um, yeah. So, I've been thinking about all of the things that you all have talked about and questions that you've been asking about. And uh, I looked at also the survey. Yeah, hey Coco, how you doing? Good to have you. <laughs> I'm glad you came on. Yeah, this is a good crowd. You guys are good. I got all my, my gardening friends with me today. Yes, sorry. I, I know we're going to have a good conversation. I am so happy. I'm ready. <laughs> so the topic is this, surviving and thriving. How are we going to not just survive the garden, but we're going to thrive this year in the garden? And this is based on the survey that I gave you all. Um, and thank you to all 34 of you all who voted and participated in the survey at Catherine's Garden and Home. And this was the question I asked on the community page. Hello, gardening friends. How do you rate your gardening experience in 2021? And how do you plan to make it more enjoyable for 2022? Leave a comment below. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and completing this short survey. Catherine, okay? So thank you guys for, um, for answering this because I found out that um, five, a lot of you, um, 12 percent of you all gave it a five for last year. I had a great year in 2021. So 12 percent of you really enjoyed your gardens, you really enjoyed the process. You were just feeling real good about yourself and your garden. Then um, for four, gave a rating of four, good. I will make some improvements. 32% of you said that you had a good gardening experience. I was so pleased to see that. That 32% um, that of you really enjoyed the gardening experience. You said, I will make some improvements, but overall you really enjoyed it. So you gave it a four, but you still see there's some room to grow, some room to improve. And I thought that was very powerful. That was very good. 
And then three, uh, some people gave it a three. And they said, oh, it was okay. Uh, we'll make a lot of changes this growing season. And you know what? The number was 32% again. 32% of you all said it was okay. It was okay. It wasn't bad, but it was okay. And that you will make a lot of changes this growing season. So there is still room for improvement, but yet you still enjoyed your garden somewhat. And that's a good thing. That's really, really good. Because you don't want to be out there in the garden and not enjoy it at all. Or um, see any joy in it. And then a two. This, this is to, uh, people who gave or rated their garden experience as a two. Said that they need more experience and will keep on growing. And you know how many people? 24% of you all said that it was... Yeah, it's all right. Um, I need more experience, but I'm not going to give up. And that's what I liked about that. Said, I will keep on growing. The 24% of you all said that I'm not going to quit. I'm going to give it my best shot. Well, you got a new year to do that. <laughs> this year, this growing season. You got this year to do it. To, to improve it and make it even better. And I love that attitude. I think that that is positive because sometimes you don't get things right the first time. But I don't know if you heard of it, heard of this thing before. If you don't get things the first, right the first time, try, try again. Yes? <laughs> try, try again. And of course, learn from your mistakes and look for improvement and research. And I think that we as gardeners, that we are like scientists of the garden. We are researchers and we're coming up with new techniques, new ideas, new adventure, new inventions, um, new strategies to deal with our plot of land. <laughs> because everybody's land and situation and location is different and unique. Even comparing the gardens around me here, everybody's garden is different. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna try cabbage again. I really wanna make my own coleslaw. Yeah, see, you got purpose to grow cabbage so that you can make your own coleslaw. That's really good. You know, I actually did that, and I know how you feel because two years ago, um, I tried to grow cabbage. The cabbage grew, but then the, the worms, the cabbage worms, the slugs got it, and I think the location that I had it into, it after a while received too much sun, and so this uh, last year I changed the location and I put a whole lot of uh, uh, what do you call it marigolds were all around. Hey, hey, Sheree, how we, Sheree, how you doing? Black Tropical Homestead. Hey, beautiful household, brothers and sisters. Yes, hello, hello, hello. Yes, that's what happened to mine too. Cabbage moths are no joke. That's right. So what I did was I saw this picture of cabbages being surrounded by marigolds. And I have to say that it works somewhat because I guess the marigolds... Um, they don't like the smell or something or other, but it seemed to have worked. Soul Family Black's Tropical Homestead. Woo, hey, yes, sir. We say hello, 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 hello. And we have, hi, Lashes Journey. I hope I'm pronouncing your name. Lashes Journey, how are you? Hello, thank you for coming and joining us here at Catherine's Garden and Home. La yeah, Lashes Journey, how are you? Yay! So, as I was saying, so some of us, we are, um, we are experiencing, we, okay, wait a moment, I didn't get to the last one. Oh, number one, uh, giving it gardening a rating of one. Do you know that um, gardening might not be for me? I had zero percent. No one gave gardening a number one. And no one was about to quit out of my 34 votes. I thought that that was so good. 
to know that uh, people are willing to give this whole experience a try for gardening. So that is, that is the first thing. If we're going to thrive, then we have to have the right attitude. And I think attitude is everything. Um, and I'm so proud of you all, my gardening friends, how you all, how you all um, have decided to give gardening a go and to make it happen. That's a good thing. <laughs> so um, when you kind of add up the numbers here, um, the 12% of you all who really just enjoyed the garden, gave it a five, congratulations. And I hope that you're able to keep it up this year coming up that you can even uh, make it even more better, more exciting, or find that joy again that you found last year. Um, for those of you with the fours, the fours and the threes, I love that. you. I have 32% with the four and 32% with the three. So that is 64%. 64% of us are in the position where gardening was good or okay. And we want to make some good gardening changes. We, I will make some improvements. Some of us want to make a lot of improvements and some of us are going to make, a, um, you know, just really tweak it some more. What'd you say, Rachel? I'm planning a whole revamping on my front flower bed. Yes, yes. Now that's going to be exciting. I can't wait to see because you're doing a lot of growing inside, Rachel, and you're doing a lot of chain um, pre, you know, seedling, getting your seedlings together and so forth. And they get, they look so healthy. I'm excited. Hope my seedlings do well. I think they will, you know, and um, I think by now you probably know what will grow well in your front bed and you kind of know that area and you could tell what, what will work and what won't work. So I believe you will have great success. And because you planted so many plants, if something happens to one, you could dig it up and replace it with another one. Because <laughs> you have so many seedlings. You are so ahead of the rest of us. Oh my, with your seed planting. But don't worry, we'll catch up. We're gonna catch up to you, Rachel. Yes, we will. Um, so I'm, I'm so excited about that. Okay, so now I was thinking about you guys. Hi from Holga. Holga! Hi, Holga Homestead. How are you? So good to have you come back and join us today. Good to have you, Holga. Um, so we want to move past um, thrive, uh, surviving, and we want to go into thriving. And I know that you, got, you all are thrivers because you got the right attitude and my my what did you say babe you said my coleus and loberia are growing good my impatient had less germination i think the begonias are a write off unfortunately oops well you know you can always change it for another oh wait a minute what happened um you can always switch it up you know Okay. Huga, huga, huga. All right, Black Tropical Homestead, did you ever find somewhere to stay that night? I don't know what that is about, but I hope you did. Obviously, you, you, it worked out. Hi, Sonia. Uh, G Mama Grows, Black Tropical Homestead, Brampton. Yes, say hello and greet everyone. And for those of you who are listening on and who have not decided to join the chat, come and join us in the chat. My name is Catherine and oh, good Coco, always fun. Yes, um, my name is Catherine and I, you are here with Catherine's Garden and Home where we grow, 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 grow together. Yeah. Had to drive 45 minutes away, but it ended being a wonderful weekend. That's great. Yay. Yay. That's so, that is thriving. That's thriving. All right. So I was thinking about you all and 
those of you that have the problems with this will be my first time growing edible flowers for me and my bunny oh that's nice <laughs> great <laughs> that's great auntie mama gross um for those of you who have pests effective earth friendly pest protection and i was looking at the um what did you say oh no should we oh okay so um i was thinking about the barriers how you guys were talking about the different barriers for the pests that some of you have rabbits that you're not training but uh, you have rabbits that are coming and consuming your your vegetables or you may have cats or other critters coming through well um gardening gardeners supply they showed an idea that i think that you could possibly create do you see that that's for to keep the cat out from the garden they created a barrier. <laughs> they do. Well, here, this is what they uh, they came up with: some rugged, rug, rugged as metal mesh. And they showed some mesh. There's some different mesh that you could get. Chicken wire. I have for the rabbits this year. That's good. And look at this. This to me was quite, the cat scat mat works indoors and out. Look at this. This is what they have for the cats. It has like little prickly things at top. So if the cat goes to put his paw inside your, your stuff. Hello, Nicole Smith Gardening. How are you? Welcome. Look at what the, what the cat will discover. Isn't that something? They're going to put their paw in, and, <laughs> and I feel sorry for the cat. If you're a cat lover, that seems kind of harsh. Um, I have those, too. You do? <laughs> That's good. Cat scat mat works indoors out. Keeps pups out of the veggie patch and cats from using beds and containers as little boxes. Flexible plastic spikes are harmless but effective. They say that it's harmless. To me, that, that, that seems like it will harm their little paws. But anyway, what did you say about the doll tree? We have those at the dollar store, but they're really small. Oh, okay. So um, those, are, those are ideas for the, the barriers. And then they have chicken wire. Check this out. You can protect it like that, too. Yeah. Somebody says they like the idea of planting more onions and garlics. Yes, the natural way. That's true. That's good that you guys are, are talking about the natural way of, of keeping those critters and things away. Citrus peels keep cats away. Well, that's good to know. Come on, that's good. And continue to put ideas in the chat so that other people can have it. I like the idea of planting more onions and garlic. Yeah, that's true. They also say onions and garlic are good to protect because a lot of the of those animals don't like that. I also uh, be placing moth balls around the perimeter. Yeah, that's a great idea. I love onions and garlic. Yes, <laughs> onions and garlic is good to have. And then you can store them too over the winter and you have that not just for that time, not just serving the purpose of helping to create a barrier, but also you get to harvest the onions and the garlic too, and have them over the winter time um, to to eat and enjoy. So that's a good thing. So that's one one of the things that I saw were, were the barriers. Mothballs are banned in a lot of places. They're not good. Oh, okay. Yeah, the sm um, that that I could understand why. Maybe the chemicals. Critters don't like the smell of herbs. I intermix herbs with all of my edibles. Vintage Gardener, how are you? Yes, 
Hello, oh, Rambo, how are you? Hello, Garden Family. I'm here now. That's good. I plant a lot of chives, and that works well, too. Good. Well, I love that idea. Um, uh, we plant onions in our potato beds and marigolds around the outside. Yeah, I love that idea. And I use, I'm good. How are you? That's good. That's good. I know that I'll use them for the squirrels, too. Rambo, yay! Yeah, I think that um, using herbs in your garden and intermingling your herbs with your vegetables is a really smart idea. I love that, and I like how it looks. And as you know, I like flowers anyway. So uh, anytime I'm able to tuck a marigold or a beautiful chive in with my vegetables, then I'm going to do that. I'll be asking local fast food restaurants for their five-gallon gallon what pickle bu buckets to make a mobile garden for my aunt who's in a wheelchair these buckets are food grade and and free with lids if you ask wow that's really great Chrissy Christy I will wow I never thought about that to ask them for the five gallon pickle pickle buckets wow which store would that be um I don't really go to fast foods anyway. You know what? My eating has actually improved uh, with the garden that I haven't been to a fast food restaurant in a long time. And that's really good. Uh, so I don't even know what they have. But um, that sounds like a great idea. And what a wonderful thing to do to create a, a, a garden with the buckets. I also plant foxglove, delphiniums which are toxic on the outside of the vegetable garden. Animals will tend to avoid these areas. Vintage gardener. Oh, that is a great idea. Yes. Yeah. To, so you would line around your garden with the foxgloves and those things that the, um, that the critters don't want to eat. So they assume that everything is filled with that, right? That's a great idea. That's to trick them. Outsmart them, right? We're going to outsmart them. <laughs> What did you say? Ha ha ha, but everything you grow tastes like pickles. <laughs> well, I was wondering when you're going to make us laugh. That's good. <laughs> you forget that you're putting dirt inside and a lot of water. By the time the dirt and the water, uh, the things won't, wouldn't taste like pickles. <laughs> anyway, how do you make pickles? With cucumbers. So if you plant cucumbers in the bucket, it'll be just fine. Burger King restaurant, restaurants have been very kind in the past. The managers used to save them for, for me to pick up to make storage stools for teachers. Wow, you are quite creative, Christy. Yeah, storage stools for teachers. That is wonderful. Um, yeah, and that is part of what I think needs to happen this year with gardening, with supplies, because the thing is, is that, um, hi, Yami, that's nice to know, the vintage gardener. Thank you. <laughs> hi, Yami. What did you say? I'm missing some of what you all are saying. I'm going to have to try and outsmart those slugs this year. Yes, my foxglove did nothing last year, never got bigger than the seedling. Hey, people. Hey, Yami, how are you? Wow. That's what I've been telling you all too, though, that we need to start to think outside the box, start to think creatively. So when I'm showing you this stuff, it's that so that you can start to generate ideas. Well, what do I have on hand? What do I have available that I can use uh, to create something new that can work for me? You know, and... Uh, that's, yeah, very resourceful, Christy Lewis. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Um, and then I wanted to show you, oh, uh, some of you came on a little later here, but I wanted to show you with the composters. Um, so in the, the, the gardening supply book, man, manual here, uh, they, have, um, they have these composting bins and different types. And I was saying, like, if you have a galvanized tin or a garbage can, look at that. 
That's just a garbage can with some handles on it that you could turn upside down. Yes, it does take a while for foxgloves to, um, I think they are biannuals, so that's why it will take two years. The first year, they just, that. thank you for sharing that, Coco, because maybe, um, uh, Rachel, um, foxgloves are biannuals, and what they do is they make the floret the first year, and then the second year, they then um, become flowers, they then flower. So unless unless you get a special type or you yeah, but I thought it would be at least at least grow some leaves. Hope it it comes back this year. We shall see. Yeah, but that that is true. What Coco said, and I hope you do have success because you work so hard. I'm just I'm so proud of you, <laughs> Rachel, with all that that seed starting. It's such a great thing. Um. If you seed your foxglove outside in the fall, they will flower the first year. Oh, really? Uh, is that because they get a chance to um, grow f a little bit first? So they 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 um, almost are starting this first year. Is that what it is? And then the next year, it's like their second year. I use pellets to make a compost bin. Okay, I use oh the pellets. Oh the pellets. The pellets. Uh huh. Well, that's that's like this this one here. You see that? That looks like the pallets, right? And then um, this is another way that you can make um, a compost bin. And here, the pricing is oh, and the pallet style Coco, You know that here the cedar compost bin is three hundred and forty nine dollars. So if you can get some pallets from uh, Home Depot or from, if you know somebody's building something and you're able to create your own uh, compost bin, uh, that's the way to go. Because other than that, I ain't got time. Yes. <laughs> then you, it's, it's, um, it's, this is very expensive for free. Yes, that's, that's it. So in a sense, you can use this design because now you get to see what it looks like and you could just get some nails some hammer um you know and if you have some a saw you can create your own um pallet compost a vintage gardener says yes uh, a fair number of perennials like foxglove hollyhocks and yarrow will flower the first year if you seed them outside in fall they do sprout and put down roots this fall yeah it's called bait but it kills them too what is that <laughs> i'm this i'm not following the conversation there but anyway um yeah hit the like button i i see that thank you bev hit the like button all right, so I wanted to show you that with the compost, and then there was another thing that I wanted to show you. Here, in here, they talk about grow bags. Grow bags. And growing um, food in bags. Grow bags. Have any of you tried grow bags? And I'm thinking that grow bags, if you could get a really durable enough bag that you can slit some holes in it or maybe even put it in, you know, one of those dollar um, laundry baskets and just rest the bag inside the dollar laundry basket, put some holes in it and then fill it with dirt, that that could work too, you know, as a grow, like a grow bag because now um, it is, you can put, you know, you could be creative, I think, with this. Instead of, um, it says here, buy three for $15.25. I love my grow bags. I make my own mini ones for seedlings. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I prefer instant death to slugs. <laughs> Wait a minute, what did you say? <laughs> Gee, Mama, I prefer instant death to slugs. That's just me. Though I don't garden like everybody. <laughs> Yeah, I'm growing my 
other potatoes in grow bags this season. Yeah, you know, I think I want to do that too because I tried growing uh, potatoes in um, my big containers, my big plastic containers, and they grew. I had some really dinky little potatoes, more like seed potatoes, and I just threw them out in the garden. But um, I think that I want to try the some kind, some form of grow bags. But I don't know if I want to spend the full um, amount here. For some reason, I feel like if I get some kind of like, I don't know, um, bag or sack or something, that I'll be able to create my own grow bag. Just fill it up with some real good compost or dirt and um, somehow be creative about it. But yeah, so that's another way to grow. And I, I think growing potatoes, there was this video that I watched of this lady, how she had a grow bag. They're super handy. What? Um, uh, Amazon has grow bags 10, 10, five gallon grow bags for 20 bucks. Oh, that's good. That's reasonable. Vintage Gardener, thank you for that. I think I'm going to check out Amazon then because that to me is more reasonable i think i would i want a lot i want a, the bang for my buck because i want to spend if i'm going to spend my money i want to spend my money on things that are unique and special like my um you know that that's like the cadillac or the mercedes of of the garden that's what i want to spend my money on but for the the regular things like potatoes and things like that I want to be creative about it or um, uh, spend the most, the least amount of money <laughs> for, for that. Because you can ultimately plant it in the ground if you have to, you know. So um, that is what I have to share with you. Let me see what else. Um, so how are the rest of you doing? And how are you all doing? Doing good? I hope that all is well, that you, you're, you're doing a good, you're having a good beginning of March. Could you believe it? This is the, what, second day of March? Make sure the fabric pots are thick since those cheap ones allow bugs to borrow through the bottom if the pots are not raised up. Okay, thank you for letting us know. I'm not too bad, Miss Catherine. That's good, Rambo. Yeah, because another part of this whole experience with the garden and, and really helping us to uh, more than just survive, to thrive, is to keep our, our minds at peace. And we know that there's so much going on in the world right now. And I think even now our gardens carry more weight um, are more important than ever before because we want to ma maintain our composure and our ability to think logically and to think realistically about life. And I think the garden will help us to stay grounded, you know? And I think it was you, Rambo, that talked about um, the, the garden grounding us, um, being able to touch the earth, to uh, be in it, you know, I think that that is so important to stay rooted uh, through in the garden. So one of the things we really want to do this this year is to make sure that we spend time in our garden and not just uh, work the garden, but actually sit in the garden. I believe it's Jess of Roots and Refuge. I was watching her and she has a whole new plot of land, a large uh, a homestead that she's creating replenishment of mother earth yes um and she said one of the things that she wants to make sure that she does is to create different seating areas or places that she can relax in g mama says right make sure the pots have handles since they all since they all don't come with them all right thanks for the for the insight um but she was also talking about the fact that we need to find a place to sit. Also, don't let your husband hit the grow bags with the weed whacker. <laughs> or throw them out in the trash because they look like trash. 
in the garden. <laughs> he might he might think it's trash. Yeah, that's true. Um, but anyway, back on topic here. I'm talking about the fact that we. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me show. oh goodness I gotta catch myself but anyway oh he's like look more drainage <laughs> you know one one year I filled up one of those um, leaf bags the leaf bags with leaves hoping to put it aside in the garden to use it uh, so that during the winter it can decompose and become that's all right sweetheart we need to laugh we could decompose and become uh, compost and um my my husband took it and threw it in the you know trash he went and and set it out on the curbside. I was so disappointed because it had sat there for so long, you know, all through the winter, and it really had started to gain that kind of wet, soppy look, like like if it had really started to decompose. And he tossed it in the garbage. I was like, oh my goodness, I was so disappointed. So it's true, you know. So you got to figure out where you lo where you're locating things because we got to share our gardens with our loved ones. And so there, we want them to share the garden with us and to come in and enjoy the garden with us. I'm so happy that my husband helps me in the garden. It is such a joy to be out there with him. And when the both of us are there together, it's really great. But sometimes, you know, he just, he will dig something up. It's like, oh my God, don't dig it up. I'd run over there to it. Don't dig it up. That's my plan. Don't do that. Now you sound like my husband. <laughs> so, um, but then there are times when he just makes the garden look so, um, so clean and neat and beautiful, especially with cutting the grass and, you know, keeping the edges straight. Some of those details that I miss, he picks up. So you got to just, you know, one hand washes the other, right? And if he does do that to you, Rachel, weed wax your bags, I guess all you have to do is get another bag and fill it up, start all over again. But anyway, my point was that we need to also get out into the garden. And during those cool times, uh, during those save my, save my, my plants, <laughs> uh, but um, during those cool times, you know, like when it's dusk and there's a breeze and uh, especially when the roses are out and the garden is perfumed, make sure you spend some time in your garden. Find a chair, a little bistro or something and sit down and enjoy your garden um, because it we're going to need that, especially in these days coming up and these next months coming up we're going to need to find some solace in the garden and the garden is going to provide that for us so that's one of the things that we have to maintain to uh to be able to thrive during this season our gardens are going to mean so much more to us than ever before uh, mine love to throw everything away yes coco <laughs> We have two different gardening styles. I'm always in my garden. That's good. That's good. I love doing yoga in my garden. Yes. And you're going to really need that peace. Find a peaceful place where you can meditate, even take a good book, read a book or watch your videos. I wouldn't actually, I would say read a book maybe. Um, but do something that is uh, relaxing in the garden. Let the the garden be your place of meditation and uh, your, your saving grace. Garden is my saving grace. Yes, Rambo. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so maintain your composure and your ability to think logical is key for this these months coming up. 
and we we are um, even though a lot of the things that are happening out there in the world don't really affect us here in the United States per se like war um, you know physically but emotionally when we watch and we see all of the devastation that's going on it can it can have a toll take a toll on us so we must find that place even in our homes right now just looking through the catalogs having conversations with you all having this time where i'm going to keep him because he is my my bob the builder <laughs> You got a good one. If he's Bob the Builder, you need to keep him as right. Um, but keep maintain that peaceful place in your garden. And as you are planning and thinking, it's a good distraction. It's something positive. Anything that helps you in the garden, that helps you to create and expand and so forth, it's a good thing um, because it will help you to keep your mind off of um, the negative and the feeling of hopelessness that we can feel hopeful because we are being creative. Um, and it'll help us to keep that ability to think logically and clearly, especially for our um, loved ones and also for um, family members and people around who don't have gardens, who are nervous about uh, where their food is going to come from and will they have how you know because at least the garden allows us to feel self-sufficient that we can be proactive in finding out where our food you know in uh, providing food for our, our ourselves and our families um so keep a positive mindset don't let despair and grief take over your mind but find the peace in the garden and that's something i wanted to share with you also and be informed you know we just need to stay informed about what is happening and to prepare make sure that we have um, extras if you see something on sale that you really love um, to buy extra of it and put it aside for for that time because maybe if you go back uh, to that location it might be it might be all gone, you know, because of the supply chain being limited and so forth. So keep a survival kit for your garden. Think about the things that you really need that you see now and um, and start to just put aside instead of buying one, maybe buy two, you know, or buy three so that if something should happen, that you can still keep your, your gardens functioning. Um, be uh, Prepare and build your stockpile, in other words, of um, resources and things that you would need. The other thing is, is Deborah with us? Deborah was here, and I think Deborah was talking about having a water jug or a water source, and I think that is a great thing. That's something that I am yeah inflation is real right now so finding those bargains coming up with creative ways of of doing things in your garden is really really important and um there was something i would say oh yeah water water is a big issue too with the garden and survival and all of that uh wa water having water um and so inflation is so stupid <laughs> Prices just yes, but we 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 are resourceful, so we're going to outsmart inflation by coming up with these ways of seeing what do we have available around us, what do we already have? Do inventory of what you have already around you, and then um, think creative ways of how to uh, make it stretch. And said, Coco, when you said you're going to keep him because he's Bob the Builder, that's a great thing. You're, you're already ahead of the game because you have someone who can create and build you what you need, you know, build it for you. So that's a beautiful thing. And Deborah was talking about water, storing water, gathering water. How long until they blame the high prices we have been seeing for a while now on the war in Ukraine? Anyway, I don't want to go there, Rachel. I'm so glad we don't depend on this, the
the store much. Yeah, and that's exactly what I want to uh, talk say too, um, that we have to get rid of the store-bought dependency. What can help us overcome our store-bought dependency? That's what we want to talk about. Um, how can we be proactive? Proactive. And yes, there are many negative voices out there, but we don't want to, um, to get stuck on that because that will make you depressed. Yeah, when, when we uh, t talk about the low, pro um, you know, inflation and all of that stuff, yes, that is, is there. And we don't um, discount it, but the thing is, is that we use it instead as a way of galvanizing all of our logic and thinking ability and our creativity to make the good happen, you know, for us and for others. Yes. So I really like that. Um, Sheree, because I actually wrote, uh, Sheree, I actually wrote that down on my paper. Store-bought dependency. How can, what can help us to overcome our store-bought dependency? And you all are really ahead of the game because you're growing your own food and you are becoming more and more resourceful. And when I show you things in the catalog, it's not so much that I'm saying, go and get it, but I'm, what I'm trying to do, and I don't know if you, you're getting this, is that how can you take what you have and make it better? How can you be creative? I have a water source in my backyard. We use the brook to water the garden. Yes, that's great. That our gutters, I'm going to, uh, we wanted to, uh, to change or I want to do something with the gutters, put like gutter guard or something on the gutters. And so how can I now um, capture that water uh, from the gutters to be able to use it to water the garden? And last year what I did was my husband had these big black pails that he, he had. And when it rained, what I did was I allowed the pails to get filled with water. And I um, when, the, when it wasn't raining, I use the waters, water in the pails to water the garden. So I have them in strategic parts of the garden hidden so that people couldn't see, see the pails. But then when I needed water, instead of having to, to pull out the holes all of the time and to help conserve in water, I used the water that was in the pails. And um, it, was, it was just such a great idea. And especially like for some of my pots, that were small, I would just dunk the pots in the pail and uh, so then it will soak up the water and put it down. And so it just really made it easier with gardening um, to have water, uh, you know, resources around the, the home. Some people use those tubes, you know, the, um, what do they call it? Um, I forget what they call it. Rainwater is the best water for your garden. Yes, yes, it is. It is good, and I love when it rains in the garden. Um, they have those tubes with, um, what do they call it? Um, garden hoses, the hoses that have the holes in it. Uh, I can't think of the name. But anyway, um, there are different ways. So thinking of ways of watering your gardens and really... Um, trying to be good with that hello on the phone with my daughter okay that's irrigation drip tubing yeah there you go <laughs> vintage garden thank you soakers yes all of that <laughs> yeah that's what i'm talking about you know because you could you could do that as well for me that would be a lot of soaker holes i mean that'd be just a lot of work but um, that is something that uh, some people can try. If you have a small garden area, I put down over 1,000 feet of drip tubing last year. Woo! That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have the capacity to do that, then that is a great thing to do. Um, let me see. Yeah, so that was the other thing, uh, not being store-bought dependency. Uh, what can help us to overcome our store-bought dependency? You know, that is, that's a really great thing. And I have to say that I was quite amazed at how much I um, was able to utilize my produce by 
um, freezing them and storing them in my back room here in the cold room that I have and in the freezer. And a lot of that, um, that was so good because I've, I've really enjoyed eating from my, my, um, my harvest from last year. And it really has inspired me to plant more. Okay, so we're running out of time. And um, let me see what else I have written here. So stay healthy, people. Stay healthy. Exercise around the garden. Start exercising now. And uh, make a place to sit in the garden. Create tools and recycle things to make your garden, gardening easier. And um, what else did I say here? Keep a positive mindset. Create a pleasurable environment. Because along with the working hard, you want to see beauty. Beauty in the garden creates energy. And a lot of us are going to be creating uh, flower gardens and cut gardens with our zinnias, our marigolds, our um, uh, cosmos. So I did go shopping. I went and splurged. Yes, I did. I was looking through the Johnny Seeds catalog and I got the porcelain doll um, hybrid specialty pumpkins. <laughs> they don't have a picture, but I bought the seeds, more pumpkin seeds. But this is a nice one. Roses. Yes, roses are beautiful. So I bought some porcelain doll um, pumpkin seeds. Let me see if I can show you what it looks like. And I also bought, um, you remember, um, Rachel, I talked about amaranth. Who else grew amaranth? I got the red spike amaranth from Johnny C. And it looks like this. So this is a new one for me in the flower category. And um, what I'm going to do is save the seeds. Hopefully, I'll be able to save some seeds from it so I can have it the next year. And then the next one I bought was um, the Cinnamon Girl, Girl Pie Pumpkins. Well, you know, I've been planting a lot of pumpkins, and that pumpkin is more like a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. You grew that last year, Beverly? Oh, love my amaranth. Yes, I'm growing it to this year. You guys inspired me to get some. Catherine, you are a bad influence. Why? <laughs> um, I bought the Cinnamon Girl, the Cinnamon, cinnamon Girl um, Pie pumpkins because, um, you know, I've been eat, making pumpkin pie. So they say that this has like a cinnamon flavor or whatever. Johnny Seeds too. Yeah. And so uh, they need light to germinate. Yeah, so I, I'm going to make sure I give them light, um, Rachel. Do any of you eat the amaranth? No, I don't. Well, I don't know. Do any of you eat the amaranth? Co Coley, I wants to know. All right, and then fever few. Fever few. I don't know if you know what fever few is. I love fever few. I love the smell of it. You have me buying seeds left and right. I do. I, I did that to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I got me some fever few. No, I, I didn't. Okay. Um, fever few is really nice. Um, let me see if it's in here. I bought some fever few. It's like a filler for the garden. And I'm going to, it's, it's nice. It's like white little fluffy flowers. I grew them before and um, it was nice. They came back and um, they, they, they like filled up an area. They're really, really nice. Lady Cheryl, Lady Cheryl. Oh, she eats amaranth. Um, or did she show, uh, I almost got some fever few. Now I guess I will. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Cheryl. Lady Cheryl is in the house. Am I so blessed to have Lady Cheryl in the house? Lady Cheryl's. Oh my goodness! I didn't see you. Hello, Lady Cheryl. How are you? We have royalty in the house. How are you, my sweetness? Oh, we love you and honor you. Yes, we do. She is the queen of gardening. She's such a great 
um, a teacher, and um, she, if those of you who are interested in canning, please visit Lady Cheryl. Lady Cheryl, there's some people on my chat or on this channel that they want to do canning. So um, if you are interested in canning, visit her channel. She has a course on it and she will give you firsthand information. She will speak to you and talk to you and so forth. And um, you will learn a whole lot. She's a teacher. So yeah, food forests and products, yes. So make sure you, excellent canner too, yes. So make sure if you're interested in canning, visit with, late. yes, she is the queen of gardening and canning, yes. So we are so honored to have you with us, Lady Cheryl. Really nice to see her, Lady Cheryl, yes. Lady Cheryl, by the way, I have fruit trees. My fruit trees are doing really well, but last year my plums didn't do well and because I didn't use any dormancy oil, but this year I got myself, um, I ordered some dormancy oil so that I can um, spray my fruit trees. My plums are so beautiful, uh, were so delicious. Plums, my apple tree, peach tree, Pears tree, you are the one who inspired me to create my food forest. Yay! And they are growing. It's so good. It's so good. You're such an inspiration. And I just want to say thank you so much. I really, really admire you. Yes. Oh, that's, that's, yes. Thank you so much. Um, so I got fever for you. And last but not least, my people, I got verbena. Remember how I said I wanted verbena burner variensius for my flower gardens? Yes. And um, the seeds are so small. I'm almost wondering, you know, how am I, I want to make sure that they grow. Um, so I'm going to be, so that's what I did. I did spoil myself. And uh, after looking at the Johnny Seed catalog, I said, I want to buy myself something special. Because, you know, I have all of those other uh, seed seeds from um, Dollar Tree. So that's all my basic needs are met. Now, um, this is the specialty. And uh, that's also something very good to do, is to make sure that you try something new this year. Yes, Nicole Smith Gardening, how are you? Hello, Lady Cheryl. You have, oh, you have a lot of uh, people who really admire you, uh, Lady Cheryl. And really, we, we really do appreciate you. So, um, we're winding down here, but I am so glad. Steffi's Garden, hello, Steffi, you made it. How are you? We're about to end, but... <laughs> At least we can say, hi, Steffi, how are you? I hope all is well with you. And um, I am so proud of you, my gardeners. And my gardener is another good place to order seeds and very inexpensive, too. That is true, Bev. Um, Beverly, that's true. Uh, I loved his, um, his videos. And I, you know, when I was thinking of doing the... Um, the water jug me method of doing winter sowing. I liked his method that he got a plastic container and he was able to put it on top of the dirt and uh, use that as a, a way of growing. So I really love his, his gardening techniques. Um, and a lot of the things that he shares, he's a, he's a wealth of information. Yeah. And, uh, so that's good. And that's good. So we have here, a lot of, uh, many of you here um, have really, I'll watch replay too. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yes. And make sure you give me the thumbs up. Yes. Support the channel. <laughs> I use solo cups with milkshake shake lids to winter sew. What do you, oh, okay. I use solo cups with milkshake lids to winter sow. Okay. Vintage garden Gardener, I, I, I'm not sure if I visited your channel, but I'm going to have to make sure I visit your channel and see some of the things that you're doing. 
there. And that's the other thing that we need to continue to do is to continue to support one another's channels. Visit one another's channels. Make sure you subscribe to each other's channels and encourage one another. We're going to need each other for these months coming up for inspiration and joy. And I hope that you've experienced a lot of joy being here with me at Catherine's Garden at Home, where we grow, 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 grow together. I forgot to hit the like button. I just did. For, I just did forget. Okay, no problem. Catherine's Garden at Home. That's right. Great live as always, Soul Sister. Yay! Everyone say good night to one another. Thank you so much for coming and joining me. I feel special. Grow, grow, grow together. Catherine's Garden at Home. That's right. Grow, 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 grow together. Catherine's Garden at Home. Uh -huh. Grow, 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 grow together. Catherine's Garden at Home. What? Yeah, that's a good idea, the Vintage Gardener. Yes, yes. You guys, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because I plan on growing my channel too this year. And I want it to grow. Good night, so uh, sort out of 99 friends. Yes, blessings and peace. Let me bless you. May you be blessed. May you have sweet dreams of your garden. And I love you all. Stay at peace and know that everything's going to be all right. And pray for the people of Ukraine. Yes, Rachel, we are going to pray for them. That's what we can do. We've got the power of prayer and pray for one another. Pray for peace on earth, goodwill towards men. All right. Night, night, Rachel. Love you. Thank you all. Every single one. Sonia, thank you. Beth, all of you. There's so many of you now that if I were to name everybody, Rambo, thank you for staying up with us. Lady Cheryl, thank you. G Mama Grows, Deborah, uh, Beverly, Vintage, um, Steffi, everybody. Who else? <laughs> oh, Cherie. Um, pray for the leaders too. Yes, yes. If you are a praying person, Please, that's what we need to do. For us to thrive and survive, we've got to pray one for another. Always welcome, Miss Catherine. Thank you so much. And we know the power of prayer. We know the power of love. You're always welcome, Catherine. Thank you, Sonia. You're so faithful. I'm thinking about you. I'm going to have something special for you soon. Yes, as soon as I, I'm able to move around a little bit more. Um, I'm going to have something special for you all, actually. I have so many pumpkin seeds. Hmm. I might just give away some of those pumpkin seeds. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> anyway, have a wonderful night. God bless. Yes. As we grow, 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 grow together in Catherine's garden and home. That's right. Grow, 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 grow together in Catherine's garden and home. Yes. And share my channel with others. Yes. Share this channel. Tell people to come and join us and uh, so that we can grow the channel and, um, and just have a really great year. We are going to thrive, not just survive here. Bye. Grow, 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 grow together. Bye. Hehehe. <laughs>